Hi, and welcome to Drawing with Steffi. Today we're going to do a tutorial on how to use Paint Tool Sci and doing a cell shading technique. Um, and if you want to uh, see more of my art or be notified of future tutorials, uh, you can follow me on Tumblr at Lady Cybercat. I'm also on Twitter at Cybercat Art and DeviantArt at lady-cybercat.deviantart.com. I'm the most active there. Um, if you haven't checked out my other tutorials yet, I recommend doing the How to Use Paint Tool Sci first. It shows you all the, the basic tools. Um, also, if you'd like to own a, your own piece of Steffi art, uh, most of my prints are just $10 and shipping is pretty minimal. I'm at cybercat.storeenvy.com. Your support uh, helps me continue to do tutorials just like this. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, this is a piece I drew a couple years ago and I thought would be really useful for doing these tutorials since it's it's pretty uh, graphic-like. And we're not going to color the whole image, we're just going to do, uh, I think, the phoenixes today. And this tutorial is going to focus on the ink pen and the pen tools. Uh, and we're going to start out doing uh, just flat colors. One of the most important things to keep in mind when you're doing uh, digital art is to make sure that the artwork is big enough. Um, most of my stuff is 8.5 by 11 inches and it has a 300 dpi resolution. Uh, that means it's at least uh, 3,000 pixels wide at least in one um, direction. Uh, what we're going to start doing here is doing the flats. Uh, most animation style art um, has kind of gradients or uh, just flat colors with a little bit of gradient detail here and there depending upon uh, how nifty the animation is. I'm just gonna turn this around a little bit make it easier for me to reach stuff. Um, the ink pen is really great. Um, it does really nice flat colors. It's great for inking. Uh, but what I'm going to do right here is just lay down the flat colors. It doesn't have as many toggles as the, the brush pen um, but you don't really need them. You don't really blend or get too artsy artsy with this one. Um, the only toggles it really has is the density, but you can uh, manipulate how sensitive it is with your tablet with the hard and soft. I've got it set down at 42 right now. I'm just going to color this in. And again, I don't have to worry about being too neat. I can always come back in with uh, the eraser. I also am coloring on a separate layer. It's just a regular normal layer and the line work is set to multiply and is over the layer I'm currently coloring. Coloring on separate layers is one of the really awesome things you can do with digital art. It makes, you know, repairing things so much easier. I'm just going to color in the wing here. Again, not worrying about being too neat, so I can come back in and fix it if I have to. There we go. Turn this around a little bit. I turn it around a lot because it just makes it easier to, to reach. And make sure I have all my stuff, all my, the little edges in there. Looks good to me. And now I think I'm going to add in a little bit of gradients to make them look a little bit different. And what I'm going to do is lock the layer, because I'm going to go ahead and color uh, on the same layer, I think. Mm -hmm. or I could anyway. No, I think I'm going to make another layer. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it, that new layer on top of this one, to... Um, preserve opacity, no I'm sorry, clipping group. Um, and what that does is it only lets me color on areas that have been previously colored on layers directly under it. And so I'm still going to use the ink pen but I'm going to reduce the density and I'm also going to increase the minimum size so that what that does is instead of starting your line at a really itty bitty tiny point it makes it a little bit big. So kind of imagine it as like using like an airbrush 
or if you're, you know, when you've drawn with a pencil for a long time, the the point gets really flat, so it gets really big. So that's kind of what min size does. And I'm going to increase the um, sensitivity of the brush, so I don't have to press quite so hard. And that makes the um, makes it less streaky sometimes. There we go. And since it's locked to the layer under it, um, it makes it real easy to color inside all the lines. Let's see. I'm going to lighten the... Uh... It was just on a normal layer, but I think I'm going to set it to multiply. And then I'm going to lighten the density of the layer a little bit too just so it blends a little nicer. There we go. Let's see. Let's add a little, a little bit more here and there. I'm going to do the wings. And if you feel something gets too dark, it's easy. All you have to do is use the eraser brush. You don't have to be afraid when you do digital art. Just make sure you save a lot. Um, sometimes it's good to save so you know your computer doesn't crash and you don't lose anything. But saving often it also allows you the opportunity to go back and redo something if you decide you didn't like how it came out, and that way you don't have to start over from the very beginning. So we're just going to do a little bit of gradient style shading here. Just fade it out. Sorry about that. The dog is in the background making lots of noise. She's jingling everywhere. And we're going to just color the top of this. It's starting to look like a flaming chicken, but that's alright. Trying to hurry along because uh, these tutorials can only be so long. This one won't be too long. And I'm going to change the color a little bit here. And this will, I'm going to do this on another layer because if I do a light color on top of a multiply layer, it won't, really won't show up any. So this is another layer also set to, uh, to the clipping group. So it, it will only color on top of colors that have already been there. And I'm going to back up the softness here because it was a little bit too too strong there we go and just get a little bit of highlight on the, the wing also uh, when you're doing your highlights you want to consider where your light is coming from in this case I'm gonna have it coming from my right to my left that's looking a little, a little off so you know, be a little bit more careful. And sometimes you can use a bigger brush to uh, to get bigger areas. And again, you can just erase. You can fade it out a little bit. And I'm going to use a fairly soft eraser here because I don't want it to have a hard edge. I just want to fade it out a little bit. I'm using about an 80 size brush. There we go. Just fade that out a little bit so it's not quite so dark. Now the reason I'm not using the water brush is because that would uh, give it a totally different look and I want this to, to have kind of an airbrush feel. Alrighty, there we go. And now I think, let's see, I'm going to add a little bit more detail. And again I could do this on the same layer or I can do this on a new layer. I think we can do this on a new layer. Again, set to the clipping group so it only colors on top of what's been there before. But if I need to, I can still erase it without disturbing the colors underneath. I like painting phoenixes. They're fun. They're so colorful. And you can make them look however you want. 
And I'm going to make a little slightly smaller brush here. Get the top of the head a little bit. If you guys have suggestions for other tutorials you'd like to see in the future, you know, definitely let me know. The uh, reason I did these ones are some people suggested they wanted to see more how to paint techniques. And there are just so many different ways you can use Psy. You can make it look like markers, you make it look like watercolors. I'm going to fade this out a little bit because it got a little too dark. There we go. Now I'm not going to totally color this, like I'm not going to color the tongue or the eye really. Because this is just a demo. I'm trying to do it quick. There we go. So those are our flats. And I'm going to save. It's always important to save. <laughs> and then, let's see. I think we're going to start with the shading. Um, when you shade, you want to do it again on another layer. And you can use a gray. Uh, I wouldn't recommend using black, but sometimes I use a purple. Um, I like the French grays. They're kind of warm grays. Um, it really kind of just depends. You can use the same color on everything if you use a nice neutral color. Or you can actually use a slightly darker color, um, a less saturated color of the color that you want to be shading on. Uh, but we're going to do it simple and just use one color, which is going to be this kind of gray, warm gray color. And I'm going to use another layer and set it to multiply. And again, it's going to be on the clipping group. And the hard part about cell shading is learning how to make the shade areas. Um, I like to use an additive and subtractive technique. And what that means is um, I add into the areas I think they're going to look good, but I'm not going to freak out about the shapes too much because then we're going to come back in with the eraser and kind of trim it up a little bit. And because we're not going to gradient or blend in the shadows at all, really, just a moment. Alrighty, and we're just going to add in. Whoops, sorry about that. That was just a. Sometimes I miss key. All right, and now I'm going to fix some of these shadows a little bit. That didn't quite look right. There we go. And I'm just going to shade in a little bit here and there. Because again, I want the light coming from the right to the left. That's my right, not the computer's right. And I'm just going to do the edges of the feathers, and that helps also define it a little bit. Shadows and highlights are what help give your your art a 3D look. There we go. Not quite right. I'm also doing this with uh, no stabilization. Sometimes it's easier to color without that on. Um, but if I wanted really stark shadows that were nice and uh, straight, I might use a little bit of stabilization. If you're not sure what I'm meaning, uh, there's a little button up at the top there that says stabilization or stabilizer. It's at zero right now. I talk about that in my how to use paint tool side tutorial. I'm just going to add a little bit more shadow. Whoops, I think I'm going to take that down a little bit. I'm just going to fish it line. There you go. Fix that a little bit. There we go. And add a little bit back more in. There we go. And we're nearly done. You can actually do more than one layer of shadows, um, depending upon how complex you want your your style to be. But I'm just going to do uh, one layer because there's not that much darkness here, despite the fact that this is probably a nighttime scene. But that's okay. It's just the demo. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the eraser and I'm going to fade the edges off a little bit just so they're not quite so harsh. This is kind of a soft cell shading. And I'm going to put the density of the eraser brush down to 11. I want it really faint. And um, again, I'm just using the, the middle uh, nib for the brush tip. But you could make it a little softer if you wanted to. You could use like the airbrush one. And just very lightly 
I'm dusting over the edges of the shadow so they're not quite so harsh. I'm going to increase the uh, sensitivity of my brush so it's a little bit easier. So I don't have to press quite so hard. And just very lightly I'm going to dust over the edges so it has a little bit of a faintness. Again, you, you could use the watercolor brush doing this, uh, but I just like using the eraser. We're nearly done. Whoops. There we go. Just going to do a little bit more. It's easy to go overboard, but uh, it's just something you practice with. There's always undo if you do too much. Fade that out. Or you can just come back with your ink pen and reshadow anything that got too dark, or too light, I should say. There we go. And I think I'm going to come in with and do some highlights next. Um, I like to work from dark to light, so I'm going to do another layer. And I'm going to, it's just going to be a normal layer, um, but you could set it to something like, um, screen or overlay, but I'm just going to use it as normal. And I'm going to pick uh, a light yellow here, a really light yellow. And I'm going to go back and use my ink pen. I'm going to set that layer also to, um, I think was it, the clipping group. And there we go, just add a little bit of highlight here. I'm also going to fade this out a little bit so it's not quite so harsh. You don't want to do too many highlights. Um, most Animals don't aren't really plastic shiny, so and you only want to use a little bit, just enough. It's one of those less is more things, um, just to help kind of emphasize where edges are. So just a little bit here and there, not too much. around so I reach it a little bit better. Just a little streak here, right there. There we go. Just about done. Woohoo! And now I'm gonna take the eraser and I'm gonna fade out some of the edges a little bit on the front side and back side of the lines. Just so they're not quite so harsh. There we go. Now if you wanted to, you could leave it hard. Just kind of depends on how you want it to look. And there we go. I think I'm gonna reduce the opacity, but here, see that's what it would look like if it was on like screen or if I did overlay. But I'm just gonna leave it on the normal. But I think I'm gonna reduce the opacity a little bit, but that is how you cell shade. Uh, thank you very much for watching this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, and we will see you next time. And thanks so much. And please leave a comment if you have suggestions for future tutorials. Have a great day. Bye.